Johnny D's room, please. Hello? Johnny, it's me, Tina. Listen, I know you're a busy man. I know you're going to that conference tomorrow and everything, but I've got to talk to you. It's absolutely Tina, crucial. Tina, Tina, slow down, okay? What's wrong? Me, I was wrong. Those guys from Las Vegas, they didn't forget about the $50,000 that I owed them at all. I tried to warn you, Tina. You got a call? Worse. I was physically threatened by some goon right in the lobby of the Landview Grand. Johnny, are you there? I'm always here for you. Why don't you hurry over to my suite and uh, let's see if we can come up with a plan. You're an angel. All right, I'm, I'm on my way. Got a date with an angel, huh? The National Intruder, all the news and then some. Oh, sorry, sweetie. We just filled our quota for ghosts this week. Yeah. The light was bright, mm -hmm. otherworldly. Steve Smith stopped his truck to gaze up at the sky. Suddenly, he was lifted up into the air, high above Camden, New Jersey. Don't you love it, Dorian? I mean, phones ringing, writers writing, and we're making this rag a winner. Oh, yes, now we just have to make sure that this old rag not only recovers, but uh, knocks the banner right out of circulation. Somebody was sucking. What? Just forget about the latest UFO. I have an FYI on the PDQ. Top secret, huh? Just you and me, babe, huh? Not that secret. Come on. Princess. How's your ESP today? Oh, I've kind of stuck a neutral boss. Why? Well, I, mine's in real high gear. Something tells me that a very special person is going to be here in Landview. And her first stop is right here. Oh, boy, yeah, I just remembered. There's a lady already here to see you. A Ms. Medina. Thanks, Greg. Here's something for your trouble. Thank you, sir. My sister's all right, isn't she? Well, she's okay, but she's just got a broken heart. Lucky, what exactly did you do? Well, I just got Jake to go out to the beach house so they could be together to work things out. But instead of working, he walked. Oh, no. Yeah, I know they should be sleeping late, sipping champagne, having a little afternoon delight. I'm sorry, I know I'm late. I'll rush through here and make No, up. Megan, wait, wait. Are you all right? I'm fine, I'm fine. One Life to Live, brought to you by Nuprin, the medicine that gives you big pain relief in a little yellow pill in tablets and caplets. Megan Lucky told us what happened at the beach house. I'm really sorry. I'm sorry, I don't really need anyone to feel sorry for me, okay? I just want to forget about Jake and get on with my life. Megan, you don't have to put an act on for us. It's not an act. Lucky acting is what I do in front of the camera. This is my life. I can handle it. I've lost the perfect guy before. If anybody can handle it, I can. Hey, why don't you wait, just wait, cut wait, it wait, out? Wait, sweetheart, sweetheart, let him talk. Okay? Hey, I know you, Megan Gordon. We've been through a lot together. And I know that you need Jake in your life to get it right. It's all right. Jake who? Would you two mind telling this lunatic to leave me alone? Not until you promise that you won't give up on Jake. I mean, you guys should be together, like uh, pepper on popcorn. Now, listen. I'll help you out as much as I can. I'm sure that Sarah and Bo will, too. But we can't do anything okay, for you That's if not, you stop, don't stand up. Stop, stop it. 
Stop trying to make me feel better, okay? That goes for all of you. I don't, I don't need all of these looks, sympathy looks. I don't, I don't need people saying, poor Megan, all right? I'm fine. You understand? Look, you don't have to go through this on Sarah, your own, Sarah. Megan. I just want everyone to understand the situation. I'm not poor Megan, I am free Megan. The judge dropped all the charges against me. My boyfriend dropped me. I mean, talk about hitting the daily double. There's anything you can do. Not until she winds down. I will survive. In fact, I will thrive. Finally, I have a little time on my own. You all know how I value my independence. Well, I'm not going to start crying. I'm going to keep a stiff upper lip. I'm going to start over again. Clean slate, fresh piece of paper. Megan, would you Just stay? stop it, Sarah, because you are the reason that I lost Jake in the first place. You know how long I've waited for this? Mm -hmm. You too? <laughs> You're that excited, huh? <laughs> I just love your vocabulary. You think we're acting like a couple of kids or something? Mm -hmm. I sincerely hope so. I just hope that not just because of all the things that we've gone through, all the terrible things, you know, that we're just, um, Maybe we'll just enjoy this, huh? Now, can you think of two people who deserve this more? Don't be silly. It's just a, a prospective client that I was trying to get together with. That can wait. Welcome home. Thanks. It's good to be home. Listen, don't worry about CJ. He's, uh, he's yeah. staying right outside. He wanted me to come in here and prepare you because he didn't want his mommy to be scared. Scared of what? Well, it seems that our son has turned into quite a woodsman when we were out there on the campsite. <laughs> in fact, he's got a little surprise for you. It's green and it's wild. Oh, that's nice. It's green and wild. It's not slimy, too, is it? No, no, it's not slimy. Like he he slimy. kept all the slimy stuff in his suitcase. Court. No, I'm serious. Hey, CJ, <laughs> come on in here. I don't think your mama can wait much longer. All right. Oh, <laughs> sweetheart, look at you. What did you get? <gasps> you left Go home ahead. a little boy and you came home a big, brave explorer. What do you got in there? Show your mama what you got in there. Oh, thank you, sweetheart. It's it's a grasshopper. That's right. Oh. CJ caught that grasshopper all by himself, you did. didn't you? You're so So he brave. could show everybody back here, and then we're going <laughs> to take him out on the terrace, right? And we're going to let him go, because he's got all those cousins he's got to see, all those city cousins right here at Landfair. Gosh, that's a wonderful idea, sweetheart. So you're going to take this little country grasshopper and show him to all those city cousins, huh? Can you give me a hug? I miss you uh, so much. <laughs> oh, thank you. Listen, mm, CJ, I got an idea. Why don't you take the grasshopper and go show Kim and all the kids? And I bet you if you ask Kevin and Joey real nicely, they'll take you out on the terrace and let you go. let him go. Don't okay? jiggle him up too much. Oh, and sweetheart, don't, whatever you do, don't ask Kim about the chocolate cake that she made just for you chocolate and Chocolate cake! Go get some. <laughs> go get some of that cake. And save some for Daddy, okay? <laughs> go ahead, go. Go ahead, get, sweetheart. Save me a real big piece, okay? Need that stuff. Just a big one. <laughs> oh, Tina, listen. Thanks. Oh, I, I didn't bake it. It was Kim. I'm not, she I'm did not talking about the cake. I mean, thanks for, well, for giving me and CJ some time together. I mean, it was great. It was much more than a camping trip. It was a chance for us to, to just grow closer. Well, I'm glad. Well, it wasn't all fun and games, you know. Uh, I did check in at the Banner with Briggs, and I can't believe the stuff that has been happening while I was gone. Oh, yeah, you can say that again. I mean, I couldn't believe it. Megan escapes from Statesville, and then they find out that Roger's the one who killed Michael Grand in self-defense, and then they spring Megan. It, it's amazing. This family must have been on some kind of a, an emotional roller coaster for a couple of days. Yeah. Yeah, roller coaster ride is right. Tina, what is wrong? And, I, and I'm not just talking about Megan here. It's got something to do with you. Now, did something else happen while I was away?
Well, this is certainly a surprise and a pleasure, Julia. Surprise? Matt, you know, you said, remember what you said it before? Uh, yeah, but Princess, don't you have another story uh, on the Jamaican bobsled team? Oh, yeah, right. You Thank know. you. Well, I've never seen the inner workings of a third-rate rag before. It's even seedier than I thought it would be. Well, I guess beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Let me get straight to the point. Since I heard that you and Dorian had gone to such a lot of trouble to advertise this new venture, I thought I owed it to my readers over at the Banner to drop in and investigate the new intruder. Boss! Yeah, yeah, what? Boss, I have an eyewitness to a UFO landing last night. Again? Yeah, but this was on the top of the White House. Little blue men got out unloading crates of broccoli. Okay, 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 take it down. We might use it for filler. Thanks. Right, right. Talk to me, hon. <sighs> Intergalactic yeah. broccoli. Yeah, well, certainly a story uh, the banner won't use. Thank God. Did I pay you the compliment of referring to this publication as a rag? Try kitty litter liner. Well, I've always liked cats. It doesn't bother you to, to own this journalistic joke, does it? Well, it depends on who has the last laugh, doesn't it? Besides, I enjoy getting a rise out of the Medina family. Don't flatter yourself. I picture myself as one of those those innocent bystanders at a road accident. It's appalling, it's gruesome. But somehow I just can't avert my eyes. You do have a way with words, Julia. And you know, between you and me, your column at the banner is a lot more interesting than Clint's editorials can ever be. I think I'll consider the source before I thank you for that. No thanks necessary. And while you're here, uh, I have an offer to make you. Instead of fighting me, why don't you just join me? Court, if something were wrong, don't you think I would have gotten a message to you out in the woods or something? Then what is it, Tina? And please, don't say nothing, all right? Because I know you too well. It's, uh, just this prospective client I mentioned. Oh, the angel. Yeah, I mean, well, uh, he could turn out to be one if he would just um, settle on a fee. As usual, money's the problem. Oh, Tina, come on, if you're involved, that should be no problem, right? What does that mean? Well, it doesn't mean anything. I, it means that you've always been very resourceful at saving your clients' money, that's all. Listen, Tina, I'm, I'm glad that you've gone back to work. I think it'll be good for you. You are? Yes. Tina, hey, anything that fulfills you is okay in my book. <laughs> you mean anything that keeps me out of trouble, right? No, Tina, it's just... You're good at what you do, and I think it's good for you, too. That, that's what I mean by that. However, on the other hand, I, uh... What? Well, I feel kind of bad asking for some of your time now that you're working so hard, but... See, when we're out on this camping trip, I'm talking to CJ, and he's having a hard time going to sleep. So I promise him that as soon as we get back home, that, you know, we'll spend some time together. The three of us, together. Well, I would love that. I, my work won't interfere. I would love that, Even really. Even if we're talking about going on some kind of a picnic? I mean, CJ wants to show you all the things he learned while we were camping. No, a picnic is great. When do you want to go? Well, see, that's the thing. When I said as soon as possible to CJ, I think he took that pretty literally. You mean today? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I mean, if, if that's not a problem, I mean, I've got the time off because I'm still on vacation officially over at the Banner, so I got today. But, again, if you're booked... No, no, I'm not busy at all. You sure? Well, what about this client? Didn't you say he was expecting you? Yeah, well, um, I'll just, I'll just run over to his place and I'll drop off my estimate and then I'll just rush right back. Huh. Look, and I'll just, on the way out, I'll stop and I'll tell Cook to fix us up a picnic basket. Good idea. Okay. Uh, Tina, wait, wait, one more thing. Oh, yeah, we need a blanket or something to sit on. That's your job, Cord. You take care of that. Okay, I will, but wait. Um, CJ, he... He missed you on this camping trip. And to tell you the truth... So did CJ's daddy. Well, it's nice to be missed. And, uh... I felt the same way about C.J. and his daddy.
Look, you guys get your, your camping gear all together, and, and I'll be back in a flash. Do you two mind if I spoke to my sister for a minute? Yeah, but uh, you heard her, Lucky. Come on, I'll give you my 50 cent tour of WVLE. Cost you a buck. Just like a producer. Well, you may have succeeded in getting rid of them, but that doesn't mean you're going to succeed in having a sisterly chat with me. Look, I understand that you're frustrated and that you're hurt, and I know it's easy to take it out on me. That's right, it is. You hated Jake right from the beginning, Sarah. I didn't hate him. I just didn't trust him. Same thing. If I recall, you didn't trust him either. Wasn't he always lying to you about who he was and what he was? Keeping you off balance? You never knew what kind of surprise he was going to pull next. So what? I like surprises. I like men who keep me off balance. That's part of the fun, but you had to spoil it, didn't you? You had to keep on insisting that he was trying to set me up. Can I help it if all the evidence pointed towards him? Vicky, so, Vicky thought the same thing, and so did a lot of other people. Yeah, well, you're my sister, Sarah. You should have been on my side. Megan, I am on your side. Oh, yeah? Then why did you plant the seeds that made me start thinking that Jake was responsible for Michael Grant's murder and that he had blamed it all on me? Why did you have to get between the one thing that has made me happy in my life? Okay, look, Jake has not given us a lot of reason to trust him, and I have already apologized for misjudging him. That's not the point. I know. The point is that you are very hurt, Megan, and if I could take all that pain away from you, I would. I'm sorry, that's all I can say. You're sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, and I'm angry. I'm so mad at myself, I could scream. It's nobody's fault. There's no point to blame yourself. Sarah, I've never loved anyone like I love Jake. And I know that I've lost him. Come on, woman, it's the middle of the day. All right. Well, who are you waiting for anyway? VIPs. What else? Uh -huh. I'll get the bag. Oh, give me the bag. Thanks. Billy and Steven. Hi, sweetie. Bye. Oh, what Millie are you guys doing here? I'll be brush and uh, Jasper the bear. Oh, yes, yes, we wouldn't forget Jasper the bear now, would we, Stephen? Oh, wait a minute, what's going oh, on here you now, Dan? Why, well, why do you have your suitcases, Nellie? Oh, I'm sorry, I assumed that you knew. Well, it's okay, it's all right. Wait a minute. Uh, what? While you were in the shower, I called Nellie and I told her to bring over Stephen and whatever they need for the next couple of days. Dan, I think. No, oh, it's okay, I know, I understand. Doing. They're going to run out of what they need in a couple of days. As soon as I get a chance, I'm going to go over to Grandview. I'm going to get the rest of their stuff. You're going to go get the rest. Yes, I am. Everything. I want to be a part of Stephen's life as soon as possible, and there is no need for me to wait. Yeah, well, Dan, I... Uh, hold on a second. Nellie, would you do me a favor? Would you take Stephen and wait in the bedroom for me? I want to talk sure. to Dan by himself. It's okay. just right down the hall to the left. Yeah. What you doing? Well, would you love my initiative? Yeah, I love you, but mm -hmm. what do you mean moving Nellie and Stephen into an apartment like this? I thought you wanted all of us to be together. Yeah, well, I do, Dan, mm -hmm. but I... Mm, I do, mm. I do, I really do. It's just that in case you haven't noticed, this is only a one-bedroom apartment, baby. Brenda, I have noticed, and we have explored every inch of it last night. Yeah. Mm, listen, mm. I'm being serious, though, really. I want to be serious mm. about this. Mm -mm. Being serious is not allowed. Dan, somebody does. Because you cannot <laughs> we... put Stephen and Nellie... Well, we're going to put Stephen like, like, in the bed. And Nellie, we're going to put a futon in the bathtub or something? You are making this way too complicated. No, you're making it complicated by trying to fit three grown-ups and a very large growing child into <laughs> one apartment this size. Look, Brenna, it doesn't matter. We will work it out. The size of the place isn't what counts. What counts is that we are together. They're so romantic. Mm. But it won't work. Lucky, hi. I just apologize to Sarah. I hope you'll accept my apology for dumping all over you. Hey, no harm, no foul. <laughs> Don't worry about it. And you too, Bo. I'm sorry, and I will go and change into my costume and start acting like a pro. 
You are a pro, Megan. But if you need a little time, uh, you don't want to jump right back into this, I can talk to Sheldon. Oh, writing. no, no, please, please don't. I need all of the scenes that I can get. Thank you, all of you, for your support. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I just... I'm so sick of picking myself up and starting over again. And Fraternity Row has been always very good at getting my mind off my troubles. I need to keep myself as busy as possible now, though. Really? How'd you like to be the center story for a brand new project? Will it keep me occupied? Yeah, I think it probably will. Why don't you tell her about it, Mr. Producer? I'm producing a TV movie for prime time, and it's going to be based on Fraternity Row. A spin-off? No, it's a gothic uh, romance, actually, but we're going to use the main characters from our show. What we really need is our main attraction, which is you, Megan. Hmm. Me in prime time. Yeah, I mean, it'd be great. Think of the audience. Think of the exposure. Never mind all of that. Think of the wardrobe. I'm told <laughs> that they get to keep their clothes in prime time. <laughs> <laughs> That's Megan. No, we're going to be doing it on location on this uh, island. Very remote. It's, uh, it's one of the thousand islands. Beautiful Batterly. Hmm. So what do you say? Ready to forget your troubles and go work on an island paradise? I wonder what's keeping her. Tina said that she was on her way. Maybe she's one lady who doesn't run when you call. She called me, remember? Sorry, John. She'll be here if you did your job. I did what you told me to do. Now, about this new plan of yours. How does Carlo feel about it? My father has put his complete faith in me, Greg. Yeah, that's when you were on the coast, used to calling your own shots. But here on the east, Carlo Hesser runs the show. You know what your problem is, Greg? You worry too much about little things. That gives you gray hair. You should go with the flow. You'll live a lot longer. That's got to be her. Come on, jump. Tina, I was beginning to think you didn't need me anymore. No, Johnny, I... I need you now more than I ever did. Come, come in, come in. Tell me all about it. Well, look, I can't stay long. I have to get back to this picnic. I mean, to my, my son and his father. Yeah, the happy family, right? <laughs> yeah, well, I hope so. Look, Johnny, you got to help me. You got to help me find a way to get this $50,000 back to those guys in Las Vegas. I mean... Wait, wait, take it easy, take it easy. Now, you said you'd been approached? <sighs> approached? It was more like a mugging. This man, he was horrible. He came right up to me and he told me that if I didn't get the cash back in one week, that he was going to tell my family everything. All right, take it easy. How can you say that? Look, this, this man is threatening the only thing that I really value in my life, my family. Look, look, Tina, you're not going to lose anything, all right? I've been thinking about this problem since you called, and I think I've come up with a solution. Alone? Alone? Johnny, that's fabulous. I didn't want to ask, no, but now that you mentioned no, no, it, no, I'm no, Tina, so Tina, glad. Tina, Tina, not alone, not alone. Not alone. Remember that business meeting that I told you about? I'm leaving tomorrow. Okay, it's going to be a real high-powered gathering. Lots of movers and shakers. With a little luck, I think that I can get them to help you out of this jam. That's wonderful, Johnny. You'd do that for me? How can I thank you enough? <laughs> oh, that's great. Well, now that you mention it, hmm? Uh, why don't... I, when you get back, why don't I take you out to dinner? You pick the place and I'll take you out. No, It'll no, be no, my no. treat. Tina, 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 you don't understand. Look, I, I can't pull this off on my own. Th these brokers, they're going to want to talk to you. You've got to be there with me. i got to be where? Would... There, at the conference. I mean, not, not that it's going to be all work and no play. I mean, we're going to a beautiful, isolated resort. I mean, you might call it an island paradise. You're actually offering me a job here? You're trying to lure me away from the banner? I'm offering you twice the salary Buchanan's giving you and twice as much fun. Let me see if I can make this clear to you. A, I'd rather be flogged to death than work for this fish wrapper you call a newspaper. Yes, and how do you really feel? And B, why don't you try a little subtlety, Matt? Even if it's only for your self-respect. And see, I'm afraid you've lost me. Oh, come on. You've made a public spectacle of yourself pursuing my daughter. And the only reason you want me around here is so you can get close to her. <laughs> I offered you a job because you're good at what you do. And because I want to build a newspaper empire that rivals anything that Buchanan's could ever create. In your dreams, dear. Well, that's where I believe success stories begin, dear. And you're right about your daughter. I'm going to win her, but not through you. Because I want Gabrielle to choose me. Because, because it's in her best interest, you think? Yeah, me, myself alone. 
You just don't learn. I warned you to stay away from her. She doesn't need a loser like you. Matt? Yeah? The woman with the old anchovy diet's on line three. She says it's urgent. Okay, thanks. Oh, I should take that call, Mr. Pulitzer. Empire, my foot. Batterly. A world apart. Where's the dragon to guard the moat? Lucky, it's not some kind of a creepy castle. It's a very prestigious summer resort. Oh, have you been there before? No, but I know if it says it in there, that is exactly what it is. Read the part about the sunrise and the sunset. Each morning at sunrise, a launch leaves the mainland and soon arrives at Batterley's picturesque dock. There, new guests are greeted and extended all the courtesy and hospitality. Aha, this four-star resort is noted for. Then, every evening at sundown, the launch returns to take back to the mainland those guests whose time on the island has come to an end. Ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> you leave without one last look back. For when one, sa when one says goodbye to Baddeley... One says goodbye to a dream. What poetry. What PR. Mm. Sounds romantic to mm. me. Oh, are you coming with us? Yes, I'm not going to let this handsome husband of mine go away to some island with a bunch of actresses. Yeah, but nobody's going until we get the okay from our leading lady. So what do you say, Megan? Well, I've always wanted to try my hand at prime time. Yeah, I don't think a uh, getaway to an island retreat sounds like a hardship. Aren't you forgetting one thing? Are you lucky? Yo, Bo. But, uh, okay, Bo. Yeah, sure. I'll do it. Megan, that's great. Yeah, thank you. You're not going to regret this. Huh? I wish I could say the same. Lucky. Yo. Shut up. Okay, Megan. This is what I need. A new challenge, a new horizon, far away from Landview. In fact, the longer I'm away, the better. Megan. You just can't leave Jake sitting on the bar stool feeling sorry for himself. Lucky, I know you're just trying to help, but just stay out of it, okay? Hey, I'm just trying to help out your sister here. Look, I, I know what I need, okay? I need some hard work and some adventure. Not to mention a new uh, leading man. Oh, well, no, that would be nice. Tell me more about this. I'm going to recast. Oh, yeah? Tall, yeah. dark, and handsome, I hope. Johnny, I can't go with you. I mean, how could I do that? How could I even explain that to my ex-husband or the rest of my family? Look, it's hard enough. Finding an excuse to come here for even an hour. Oh, I... they're used to you acting impulsively. That's your style. That's my old style. That's how I got divorced in the first place. Johnny, I'm not going to let that happen again. Tina, I sympathize. But the surest way to lose him is to stay here and wait for the axe to fall. Johnny, the axe doesn't have to fall if you would just... Tina, Tina, believe me. I have tried, but face it. It's gone too far. It hasn't gone too far. Don't yeah, say yeah, that. Yeah, look, as you keep continuing to close your eyes, it's not going to help the situation. Your only choice is to come with me, and let's hope that we can work a little magic. Johnny, there has to be another choice. There has to be another way to do this. Tina, I, Tina, I thought you trusted me. I thought you relied on me for my help and my advice. I do. Well, then rely on me now. I won't let you down. Johnny, this meeting, how long will I have to be there? Just a day or two. Well, what if, what if it takes longer? And um, what if they can't even help me? And Johnny, why would they even want to help me? Because they are loaded with dough and they've got generous souls. Plus, they can't resist a pretty face. Look, I'm going to think about it. That's all I can promise. Tina, there's no time to think. The meeting's tomorrow. Well, that gives me a couple hours, right? I, I just got to go back to Landfair to okay. that picnic. OK. OK. Just remember what I told you. This may be your only way out, right? Unless you want to ask your sister to bail you out. I'll give you a call later. Greg! She is so on edge, it's a wonder she doesn't get vertigo. Yeah, we'll give her the last little push. Johnny, I, I, are you sure you know what you're doing? Oh, precisely. I'm going to marry Tina Roberts. That's what Carla Hesser wants, isn't it? And what better place to court her than at a beautiful island resort? Look, in case you have forgotten, your father is sending you on business. Important business. All right? Now, if Tina Roberts gets in the way... She won't. And I can handle Frank Whitehead if he tries to outmuscle my father. Whitehead is just a hood. Tina Roberts is another story. Yeah, let's hope so. But, Greg, I've got two hands. I can handle Tina, too, all right? Now, go on, man. We don't have much time.
Dan, you cannot just move my babysitter and my child and me into an apartment like this. I have wanted you for so long. Family, now that I have you, I am not going to let you go. I want to wake up in the morning right next to you. I want to kiss you goodnight. Every single night. Well, you can. You can, but don't mm -hmm. you think it would be better to be in a place where we're not just all on top of each other, you know? Brenda, it's better than being apart. Well, it doesn't have to be one or the other, Dan. I mean, listen, baby, mm -hmm. we can have everything we want now, everything. And we can give Stephen everything that he needs, and he needs to be at Grandview right now. We have been through that already, yes, all right? I know that we have, and I know that you object, but don't you think that that's better than... Than what? Hanging on to old memories. Look, Brenda, there are more than just a few old memories at Grandview. Yeah, I know, I know there are some ghosts there for me, too, believe me. But in the morning when I wake up, I just think this that it's just a big old roomy house, that's all. And it's a lot better than tripping over each other all the time, right? And that we're going to be tripping over the memories of the man who named it. That is what we are going to be tripping over. Michael is dead and buried, Dan. And it's going to take a little while for us to get over it, but I don't see why we should deny ourselves the things that are right for us Bernie, right now. Bernie, that is not right for us. It's not. Maybe. I can't be myself in Granville. And most of all, that is what I want for us. I want us to go to a home where we can be ourselves and shut out the world. Like we were last night. Like we are this morning. Do you remember? Yeah, I remember. Uh -huh. We can't have that freedom at Grandview, but we can have it here. And this is as good a place as any to start. You know, I don't think this is such a great idea right now. Oh, I think it's a great I know, idea. I know, but you know, Nellie and Stephen oh, are in that room right like there. Like the door shut, probably watching cartoons. Yeah, but they could come out any minute, you know what I mean, Dan? <laughs> there you go. There you go, being practical again. Now, can we? Well, listen, you know, let me tell you something. If you want us to be moving in here, we are going to have to stifle a lot of that romance and become a little more practical. I don't know. Rod is convinced, and you know what a cynic he is. So what's the hardest story of the month, Dorian, huh? Let's, let's have it. Go ahead. Tina Roberts. Do you know her? No, not really. I mean, I met Cord and their son, CJ. <laughs> then you know the only two good things about her. So I take it you don't like the lady, huh? Well, personally, I think she's a tramp with a brain the size of a hazelnut. But as a reporter, I love her. She makes great coffee, especially now. Okay, Dorian, give it over. Go ahead. <laughs> well, she's been seen in Atlantic City in a small little restaurant just outside the city, naturally, with a, a handsome, mysterious young man on several occasions. So what? Where's the story? I mean, she's been uh, divorced from court for a long time. She can see whoever she wants to see. Matt, Matt, Tina is news. Hey, People darn, read darn, back about off. it. We don't... Back off, okay? On this back one. off? When Tina has practically dropped into our laps? Listen, the public has had their fill with the Buchanans already, all right? I mean, when we bought The Intruder, it was riddled with what? Pictures and, 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 and stories about Megan and Vicky. I think they deserve a rest. Oh, contraire, partner. That family is the biggest news in Landview. And the only thing they deserve is to be brought down with your pegs. Okay, just do me a favor and back off on this one, please. We're 50-50, remember? If you'll excuse me, I have a meeting with Rod to do some research. Hey, Princess. You want to know what time Gabrielle's coming back in town today, right? Yeah. <laughs> How did you know? <laughs> Telepathic powers. I'll fly over to talking to Julia Medina. <laughs> okay, okay, Karnak. One who sees all knows all. How do I get this information I need? Huh? Mm, Karnak feels the vibration. It tells her <gasps> the old florist trick. Well, great, great. Thanks. Yeah. I owe you one. 
Oh, you only a few, but... I'm <coughs> yes, yes, hello. hello. Oh. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm calling from the Landview Flower Centre. Uh, we've just received an order for three dozen roses to be delivered to the Whiteside Inn, Waterside Inn, I believe it is. Yes, sorry. Yes, Waterside Inn, uh, for a Ms. Gabrielle Medina. Mm. Oh, really? Uh, when do you expect her? Oh, this evening. Oh, jolly good, yes. Uh, so we'll come over and deliver it uh, by this afternoon. Yes, cheers. <laughs> oh, what I tell you. But now that you know what's next. Hey, you're the one with the telepathic power, <laughs> Princess. You tell me. Oh. See him. Come on. What? What? What, what, what? what is the big hurry about? You want Megan, don't you? Of course I do. Well, then get over to the studio and stop her now. Stop her from what? Mike? Leaving. You know, sometimes you're just so slow, Jacob. <laughs> Where's she leaving to? You didn't tell me. Well, it's uh, Bo and Sarah's idea. But Sarah wants her sister to leave town. Why? Well, the whole fraternity row group. They're gonna do this primetime TV movie on some island near Canada, so come on, you gotta get going. Get it, Lucky. Megan doesn't want any part of me. She and I are through. Ah, get it? Don't say that, Jake. Come on, you guys belong together. And plus, I'm getting kind of tired of taking care of you. I think it's Megan's turn. Megan doesn't want to take care of me. She's had it with me. Forget about it. You know, Megan is going on this shoot to get you out of her system. And say if she tries too hard. I know about these soaps, Jake. Those love scenes get kind of hot and heavy, if you know what I mean. So? So? She's on the rebound. Hmm? They start kissing in front of the camera. Pretty soon they're going to be hey, kissing hey, hey, off hey, the hey, camera. Hey, 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 I don't care what she does. It's her life. She can do whatever she wants with it. Okay? All right. Well, if you don't, I will. Wait, 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 wait. wait. What, what do you think you do? You're going to go tell her something? She's got her mind set on it. She's not going to change it. Well, I know that. What, do you think I am crazy? I figured I'd get a job with the camera crew or the stagehands or something. I think, you mean maybe, like, you go there, keep an eye on her, you know, make sure she doesn't get in trouble? What are you asking me? I mean, like, you're telling me to go ahead and do this, huh? Is that what you're saying? No, no, I'm not saying yes, I'm not saying no. You can do whatever you want, just like Megan, right? Uh-huh, you know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. I, uh, you know, I catch you drift. I get it, I snap to it, you know? I'm hip. See you later. Hey, hey, hey. Where are you going? I'm going home to pack, buddy. Don't worry, you and Megan are going to get back together. Count on it. <laughs> well, I think you're right, CJ. I think if we go to the park, forget about it. That's, that's not good enough. We got to go over to the mountain, over to that river. Listen, I know a great place where we can go fishing. These fish, they're so great. Not only do they bite, but they jump right into your boat and they say, please, take me home and eat me for supper. You believe that? You do? Good. Your daddy tells you the truth all the time. Remember that. Listen, why don't you reel it in? Hey, hey, Tina, how you doing? Listen, we were starting to get a little bit worried about you. Okay, we're oh, done fishing here. Oh, no. Yeah, we thought maybe you were going to cancel out on us again. No, not a chance. Look, I see that Cook got the picnic basket already. Yeah, sure did. We got that fried chicken, we got that potato salad, but we don't need that, do we? You got the best fishermen in the whole world right here, <laughs> and we're going to catch dinner, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. I didn't know that you'd become such an expert on rods and reels, CJ, huh? Oh, yeah, you know all about that. Although, uh, worms still give him a tough time. Worms give me a tough time, too. Well, I already figured that Daddy was going to be the one who was going to end up baiting all those hooks. Well, that's okay. That's what daddies do best, huh? CJ, I'm real excited to see you fishing, but, Court, honey, I didn't know that they even allowed fishing at Landview Park. Well, actually, they don't. That's why I was thinking we'd go up to Lantano Mountain to that place I was telling CJ about just now, Eagle's Cove, because that's where you catch the best fish, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, unless, of course, you got a better idea. No. No, that's, that's perfect. Um, look, why don't you guys just uh, give me a minute, I'll go upstairs, I'll change, I'll be right back. Well, actually, I need to run upstairs myself real quick. Um, could you keep an eye on him? Sure. So he doesn't play with any of the hooks you or anything? Oh, right back. sweetheart. <sighs> Oh, I can't wait. We're so excited. We're going to go on a picnic. You and me and Daddy, just like a normal family. Oh, someone's at the door. Okay, sweetheart, can you just wait here for me? Okay? Just stay right here, okay, sweetie? Yeah, let's stick on your cheek. <laughs> Hello again, Tina. We need to talk. I hope I didn't come at a bad time. Megan's gonna be a 
part of this. I want to talk to the rest of the cast and the crew. I want to firm up the whole budget, plus talk about transportation, housing. We've got about a million phone calls to make, sweetheart. Do we have to do all of this today? We? What are we, a producing team now? Well, he said he was going to share everything with me. Well, was that the, uh, the gross or the net? Everything, before, during, and after expenses. Which means you get 50% of the headache. Oh, great. Come on, let's go get on the phone. Okay, I'm with you. As long as you are okay. I'm fine. Thanks to you guys. I have a lot of lines to memorize before taping. Go. All right. So I'm going to get you a script and a shooting schedule. And thanks again for coming with us. Oh, well, thank you for asking me, bro. Have a good show. See you later. I know what I said. I said I couldn't live with your doubts and suspicions. But that's in the past. Where I say a lot of stupid things. The only thing that matters now is our future. That is, if you still want a future with me. You know, I think you don't. 